Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome back to another video of what happened off the res. You asked for it. Uh, <laughs> Warren was the loudest voice in this in in all of this, so this one's going out to Warren. This video is going to be dedicated to Warren. Ah, ah, ah no, ma'am. I did it. Okay, toothpaste, please. <laughs> Not so. Jeez, is you know what we have to deal with every day? This little jokester. Uh, <clears throat> You guys asked for a cooking video. Like I said, Warden, Warden was the loudest voice, always pushing me to do another cooking video, so here you go. Today we are making caldo de res. Now, caldo de res is uh, translates into beef soup. Um, and since it is September, fixing to be October, some of y'all, some of y'all, my northern uh, relatives up there are already experiencing you know, some chillier weather. Uh, not us down here in South Texas, we're still in the, in the low 90s which is a lot better than the 114s we were feeling earlier but we're going to go ahead and throw out this video for uh for those of y'all who are experiencing cold weather this is a perfect cold weather dish uh like it is a very hearty soup so you're gonna love it and i'm gonna show you how to make the most perfect the most flavorful gallo de res you have ever tried i promise you that last time i made this for shivana's family um, i made it in a massively huge pot it was for uh her late mother's uh funeral reception and i promise you by the end of the by the end of the reception there was not a single drop left people were taking it home left and right they couldn't get enough of this soup i promise you if you make it this way and it's super super easy you will you will not be disappointed so let's get started we're gonna let's get going with the ingredients now we're going to say we're going to use the same menudo pot and that I used in the menudo video because you know we're a big family and I also suggest you use a big pot because I promise you once you taste this caldo de res you're going to wish you made a lot more so go ahead and grab yourself a large pot for caldo de res you will need one package of beef shank I like to have one, one beef shank per person in the house one package of boneless stew meat, one large head of cabbage, one whole celery, mini cut peeled baby carrots, and a bag of red potatoes. So corn on the cob, cut cut up. I bought the frozen one to save time. Some caldo sabor ares beef flavored bouillon. To start, in a hot pan, I prefer cast iron, y'all know that. Add a little bit of olive oil. And we're gonna heat it up real high, like smoking hot. Towel dry your meat. Oops. Towel dry your meat. If you don't dry it, it won't brown properly. Please remember to season everything. Everything, everything, everything must be seasoned. Salt and pepper is the best way to go. Oh, we got it in ingredients. Don't forget to have a glass of your favorite beverage nearby. Sweet tea. Once your skillet is smoking hot, Add your meat to the skillet. Now, we're not going to cook it all the way through. We're just searing it on all sides. <clears throat> I think the reason for that is... I think the reason for that is when you boil meat for a soup what happens to beef when you boil it it turns into this really nasty gray color and that doesn't look very attractive so if you brown it in a skillet first it maintains that outer part that crust and it, it just makes it look much nicer <laughs> once the meat is browned on all sides you know let it, let it, let it cook you know let it cook let it brown. Now 
Wow, love that sizzle. <laughs> Once the meat is brown, add it to your soup pot. And now the other one. So, a little bit of history, because you guys know me, I uh, I can't I can't make a video without giving you all a little bit of knowledge. This stew was created. Um, I don't know who, who did it because you know. Let's just face it. I don't know that, and nobody knows who creates most recipes. But the shank of the cow, which is you know right on its back leg, it's got that little bit of meat around going around the backbone. Um, is a very very tough meat. In order for it to make it soft and and be able to eat it, you had to you had to cook it in water slowly, or you know you could smoke it. I guess it'd be really tender then. But this was a cold wind. This was a cold a, a cold weather stew, uh, soup. You know, you'd, you'd slaughter the, the calf at the end, of, or the cow at the end of the year, and you have all these amazing vegetables that you've been growing, so you throw it into a pie and make a soup. Now, the trick, the original recipe only calls for the shanks, and that is, is, is gonna be the, uh, the, the, the less desirable meat, the cheaper meat, that's, that's really, really hard to cook down. <laughs> but that 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 would be typically the only meat that you would put traditionally you only put the shank into your stew However, if you're like me And I got this for my grandmother Also also get that extra package of stew meat so you have some extra meat in that soup You know, you don't have to just put the shank in like like traditional recipe says Make sure you also season, dry, and brown your stew meat. Very important. Once the meat is mostly brown, you know, you don't like I say you don't want to cook it all the way through. Put it into your pot. Add water to the pot. And you really only need enough water to cover the meat by like a quarter inch. Any more than that and, nah, you don't need it. Here we go, that's enough. And now, bring this bad boy to a roaring boil. Once the beef is boiling, Bring it down to low. And let it simmer for one hour. This simmering is really, really important. If you don't let it simmer for an hour, the meat is not gonna tenderize. It's gonna be really hard to chew when you eat the soup. So make sure you bring it down to a simmer for one hour. By itself, nothing else, just the meat simmering. While your beef is simmering, now is a good time to prep your vegetables. Celery. Chopped. And you can choose to either quarter or just have your potatoes. I prefer quarters. If you have a small potato as opposed to a, a, a much larger potato that you would quarter, having this one is just fine. And the cabbage, chopped. A rough chop where all the pieces are about this big. Yeah, it'll fall apart. Yeah, enough to fit on a spoon. It's just fine. You don't have to, you don't have to make it perfect. Rough chop is fine. The baby carrots are already small enough so you don't have to chop those up. If you're using whole corn, 
which I highly suggest you do because this frozen stuff, it's going to be all mushy and not very attractive. But, you know, we don't have corn in season right now, I don't think. And the corn that we have at the store is really small and, uh, and, and not nice. So cut up your corn into thirds. At least one corn, one portion of corn per serving. And if you think like most Daddy. of us natives, you're going to want a lot more than that. Daddy. So make sure there's more corn. So the stew's been simmering for about an hour. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the vegetables. Carrots, corn, and the cabbage, celery, and potatoes. And the cabbage, the celery, potatoes, and the corn. Throw it all in there. And if, it's, if it looks like it's a little too much, don't worry about that. All of this is going to reduce as, as the vegetables start to cook. Yeah, a long time ago. And add water to the bottom. If I remember correctly, the um, if you buy the ones that come in the little baby cubes that you have to unwrap, it takes one package to make a stock pot this big. We'll just add that for now. Then we'll mix it in. So once you've added all your vegetables and a little bit of stock, go ahead and throw your flame back on high and bring it back to a rolling boil. After it's brought back to a boil, put it back on low to simmer, throw a top on there, and you're going to let it cook for another hour or two. So quick side note, if you don't want to use corn in the cob, all you have access to is, is canned corn, that's just fine. The corn in the cob just gives it a more rustic feel, like, you know, log cabin, country feel to it. It's not necessary. You can use corn out of the can. That's fine. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'm bored, like, I'm like, I'm getting um, pregnant, right? Don't say that. No, ma'am. Funny. It's really not. Go away. Good. Okay, stop that. Go away. No. <laughs> so fill up the pot. You know, <clears throat> vegetables don't have to be completely submerged. They'll get down there eventually as everything starts to reduce. If you want to, you can go ahead and start adding some stock to flavor the vegetables as well. And where to put my stock? All right, you guys. It's been one day since you looked at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I should be asleep right now, but I was worried about the soup because nobody's here right now. Uh, they took a new out to the kitty park, which you're going to see a video about later. Um, it's been simmering for... Oh, uh, about a couple hours. So we're gonna show you what it looks like. Let's turn, you know, let's turn the light on. There we go. When you lift up the lid, always lift up away from you, so the steam doesn't blast you in the face. I know some of y'all are laughing because it happens to y'all all the time. Look at that. See, everything has reduced. You got lots of stock. This right here, if you end up eating all the soup, um, you can save those. You can save the soup water as stock for like another another uh, dinner project. So you right down here, you got all the corn down at the bottom. You got some of the little beef bits. Here's that um, that um, we, that shank. See, it's all falling apart, tender. Just fell right off the bone. You can't even see it. You can't. Even, the bone's probably way down here somewhere. There's a bone right there. See, there's that that shank right there. See, it just fell off the bone. The bone's still stuck down there. It just fell right off the bone. You know it's nice and tender. There's another part of that shank. Looks like that part I couldn't cut up with the. I couldn't cut up with the uh, with the scissors. So let's get a spoon. Turn this off. So I ended up. So I ended up using the entire bottle of the um, of the uh, the beef bouillon because this is like this is a large pot, so you do need a lot of it. So it's always better to buy more than you're going to need because you don't you don't know you don't know you just don't know. So make sure you have it. Make sure you get enough. We're gonna give this a try right quick. 
it's hot, so be careful. Oh my god. Oh my god. All the bone marrow from the shank rendered down. It's rich. It's a very rich soup. Um, please don't add salt after you add the bouillon. The bouillon has plenty of salt in it already. So please don't do that. Uh, but taste it. As you add the bouillon, taste it. Taste it. Taste it. Add a little more. Taste it. Does it need more? Yes. Add some more. Add some more. Add some more. You know, keep adding it until it tastes the way you want it to. And this, it reeks, it absolutely reeks of vegetables and beef. And the, the broth itself is silky smooth. Man, it's just packed, packed, packed with flavor. Un unbelievable amounts of flavor. So, uh, Shabana's going to come home and she's going to find the stew ready, the soap. Not stew, soup. Stew is much thicker. Um, she's going to find the soup ready and she's going to taste it for y'all. She's going to let you know how, how she likes it. I guarantee you, if you make this soup, given the directions I've given you, you will not be disappointed. This will be the best, ooh, excuse me. This will be the best caldo de res you've ever had. I promise you that. So uh, we'll get back with here with Shavada when she gets home and she tries the soup. Y'all have a good night. I'm heading to bed. <laughs> Just off a spoon, honey. Wait. What movie is this from? You're good. Wrong, wrong side, Froggy. Hey, you guys, you guys. Oh, remember? Remember I said, Vlog, are you okay? And remember, mommy said to this to the slam like, like, ah, go in there. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Anyways, come on. Yeah. Whew. I just got that Mickey soup fabric. Fabric. I put it all in here, look. Mom, did you say Spider Man? So, <clears throat> yeah, no, I didn't say Spider Man. Look, fry bread and Spider Man. Um, I said, let's go or something. Like so, um, as you guys know, I'm closing on the video for Cameron. So, Cameron had me to vlog today, and and uh, he made caldo. Uh, check it out, you guys. Check it out, you guys. Ooh, there's corn. There's meat. There's potatoes. There's um. Carrots and pieces of meat right here, look. So this is what I'm gonna um, eat. <clears throat> and I made fried bread because when Cameron makes caldo or menudo, mmm, I have to make fried bread. So uh, let's go try it out. So I got a carrot, I got a meat, I got a potato. Oh, it's kind of hot. The glare. I think I need to raise you guys up a little bit. Upper. Right, upper. There it goes. Put you guys down a little bit so it won't be too much glare. I guess, you know. Um, I don't know if we need salt. Hold on. Oh. Oh my god. It doesn't even need salt, you guys. No salt. Nope, nada. No salt, no nothing, no. So I got some beef, some potatoes, some cabbage, and some carrots. Ooh, it's hot, you guys. It's very, very steamy hot, steamy hot. Get 
get a piece of this fry bread so I can dip it. Mm -mm. You do not need salt. Everything's very seasoned. Yeah. That is just perfect. You have no idea there's a bunch of bombing flavor into it. Like the carrots, the potatoes, the cabbage. <clears throat> I already dipped this, so let's try this one. Please make this recipe. Oh my god. Y'all don't even know how bomb this is. Sorry you guys are so close. Yep, you guys, it doesn't even need no salt. There's potato, look, the potato peeled off. <clears throat> and I already showed you guys the, um, the meat is like disintegrating. Like when I, when I press on it, oh, it just like comes apart, disintegrates. And why not does it disintegrate? Dude, Cameron, I know you're editing this. I know you're watching, babe. You do some amazing caldo. Along with my fry bread. It makes it like the best. It makes it like the cherry on top. Oh, you guys. Please make this. I recommend it. And like Cameron said, this video is shout out to um, not shout out to. <laughs> Shout out to Warren. Warren is always asking, what's your next dish? What's your next, you know? Man, one thing I wanted Cameron to do um, this year during April. I forgot what it was called, but oh my gosh, it's like a pie. Oh, it's not a pie. It's like cheese, raisin. <gasps> There's a ghost in here. Someone just ting my can. I mean, my... I think it's a tenderizing that Cameron does. I think. I don't know. But that is just bomb. <sighs> so in love right now. Cameron, where you at? Get over here. <laughs> <clears throat> Y'all. Please try this recipe because it's like the bomb. It's really potatoes feeling coming off the skin, the meat separating. When I look, see that means already like. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. See, I just that's it. Just one poke, and then it just comes off. Oh my god! I don't know what I'm saying. I'm out of control, but. Hmm. It is perfect. Like the carrot is not really hard, it's just the right amount of good texture. Can I have some milk, please? Um, yes, babe. Mm -hmm. Get your bit. Get your bit. <laughs> but.
But yeah, um, go for it and let me see what's the date. Mm, okay, still good. Help me shake it right. Wait, can I can I say hi to the world again? No, you already did, didn't you? No. You did it. Well, come on this side. Or just milk on you a little like that. No. Just half. Oh. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna pour it on you, crazy girl. Yeah. That's really disgusting. I, I was gonna say. Excuse, That's gross. I was gonna say, excuse me. But don't do it on purpose. You do it on purpose all the time. No, I don't want to drink. Don't put it on camera. Water, I burp. But. Anyways, anyone's gonna drink her milk and finish her food. Go take it. Go. But, but go eat your food and you gotta go to bed. You already showered. It's like a blessing every year when whenever Cameron makes this. Um What was it you say one? I scratched my head because I don't remember what I was saying. Oh uh, wait, what was it? Nee, just kidding. Uh, but yeah, you go for it and try it out. Oh my god, you guys are gonna love it. You guys, whatever camera told you to make, how to make it, like specifically. Oh my god, y'all gonna be in love. And I, I, some of uh, a few of my um <clears throat> subscribers had made the manudo and they loved it. And I'm glad they loved it because. I've never tried, I mean, I've never liked Menudo after I tried it once when I was pregnant and it was so disgusting and that was when I was pregnant and I tried it out in Gallup, New Mexico. Hell, yeah, calling out Gallup. <laughs> but after, since that day, I was like, no, I don't, uh, no, I can't. Ugh, excuse me. But once Cameron made it, I was like, my noodles are like good. It was like really red and looks really good. I'm like, kind of looks like pozole. Well, there was pozole in it, so I tried it. Well, I made bread that morning at 8 o'clock, and everybody was going to eat at 9.30 or 10. And I made like two big old bowls of um dough, and I was, I remember I was sweating. And over here, cameras are recording me, and I'm like, stop. I'm all sweating and you know like like I don't wear makeup and everything but I was still sweating I'm like stop and when everybody ate the menudo and the fried bread we cut the fried bread in half so you know everybody can there was 50 there was 100 people and there's only 50 fried bread <clears throat> everybody was getting mad I have a way to feed you. Nay, I do not. <laughs> that's part of what that's what reminds me of that movie. Every time when um I watch it when Cameron made that menudo. But um I don't know, I'm just going off subject. And I wanna really eat this right now because it's like cooled down and it has a lot of flavor. I'm trying to go one more time. Mmm, you don't even need salt, dude. I don't even know. I'm just like so. Yeah. Wow. There it is, y'all. Just make sure you have a fried bread to eat with your <clears throat> uh, caldo. And. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please share this video so other people can make it. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people make caldo and manudo and all that, but this one is the bomb. I I, I recommend it. Mmm. Mmm, see yo. Whatever that means. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Have a good night. Have a blessed night. Have a good morning. Have a good afternoon. Whatever time you guys are watching. Mm. <clears throat>
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.